computer. It's a good sound, though. That was a good sound. That should have been the start of the uh, <laughs> of the podcast. Dude, I got I got one on reserve. Don't worry. There you go. Yeah, so we are live now with Two Wheel Tuesday podcast number forty two. We're on forty two now. Getting up there, Noel. We're getting up there. Nick, um, he's dealing with I guess his wife and his kids are sick, or at least one kid is sick, so he's dealing with that. Dad life, I know all about it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm not sure I'm gonna make it. The wife's sick, kids sick. I'm holding it down. Uh, so we are brought to you as always by um, Two Wheels to Freedom, which we got a website, store, all that good stuff. Uh, also have a YouTube, although we should be live on Facebook. I'm interested how this works out. But um, also Emotocons, which is moto emojis for your phone. Uh, only for iPhone right now. And... Uh, Stroker Industries, who makes the trigger, which is a push-button self-venting fuel like nozzle for your race jug. Fog Out, which is for your goggles and um, windshield. And um, Spit Shine, which is like a, a silicone spray for to make your bike all shiny. Do you do you spray your bike and make it all shiny? Didn't you used to do that? WD-40 it? My, my dad used to do that. <laughs> I hate it. Dude. I hate when I, I get on the on my bike and my seat's all slick. So slick. I'd rather it looked a little little dingy and not have to deal with it. Yeah, my friend was like, yo, spray it with some uh uh we were going to an arena cross and he's like, Spray your bike with some W D forty and I sat on it and I immediately just grabbed <laughs> a handful of dirt and just rubbed it up and down the side of the thing and I was like, This is ridiculous. Yeah, so, so <laughs> Yeah, I don't like to look good that bad. I don't really care. Didn't you? You rode one of my bikes and you were like, what the fuck happened to this thing? Looks like it got in a fight with a spray paint can. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, does it run all right? You go, yeah. I was like, what's the issue? <laughs> Cos cosmetics, dude. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. I did. Uh, I was putting grips on and I was using the old spray spray paint inside the grip instead of grip glue. And um, as I was trying to force the grip onto the uh, bar, the bike shook a little bit. The can fell off and landed right on like that one tall, uh, you know, how you got that one extra tall tooth on your on your foot peg, like all the way out at the end. It must yeah. it must have caught that one and just went Psh! and was just rolling around my garage, just spraying <laughs> stuff. So I bent, I just stood over top of it and just let it finished. But it had already coated the whole side of that bike. And then uh, I didn't bother to fuck with it. It ran good. That's all that matters. It ran really good. Actually, I still yeah. have that one. I'm keeping that one. I bought... Bike. Yeah. I bought that one off of... Um, actually, I got um, 92 Damon Bradshaw replica graphics on it with fours. The beast no, from the east. That's yeah. <laughs> I figured you would appreciate that one. Yeah, I need. I just need a. Um, I need to get that uh, like pink seat cover, and uh, yeah. yeah, and some. Uh, right now, it's, that bike's got black rims on it, which obviously he had just straight silver rims. So, may have to do that. If you ever, if you ever take that thing out of retirement, I would expect you to have some Fox Barbed Wire gear or something. <laughs> well, I was actually when I was uh, getting the graphics done and everything, I had actually designed some to get printed by canvas. Just some like super bright colored like uh, I looked at the stuff that he had and I used the same colorways or whatever. Tried to design some stuff. Pink and black accent was was his steez for a while. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I went. I looked through a catalog and I didn't even see that stuff in there. I'm wondering if they just. I'm. I assume they wouldn't, but I feel like they almost made that shit one off for him. No, I had said that. Oh, did you? Back in, I think I was on 60s. Damn, way back in the day. My, my, da my dad has a poster still hanging in his garage of him in that gear. He's doing like a little whip nose footer or something. Of who, your dad in that gear? No, no, no. My dad, <laughs> Brad, I'm a Brad's <laughs> Do you, Your dad yeah. raced, right? 
Yeah. Um, he was like uh, just a standard amateur intermediate, but he used to rock the, the the Honda gear. I don't even know. I don't even know what brand it was, but he had like the high point old school boots with the steel steel front. Uh, yeah. Um, and I think he still has them. <laughs> but yeah, he he raced for a bit, so he had me. He had me riding since I was pretty much out the womb. Yeah, you were. Um... And correct me if I'm wrong, and you still may be. Weren't you the winningest 80 rider or something at English Town? Probably. Unless Lawrence took that crown for me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's true. But I, I was at the time, yeah. Um, I remember somebody telling me that. Yeah. Uh, Mini bikes is my shit. Yeah. Well, you, I was telling somebody just the other day when we were going to do this, and I was like, you were super, you were always super fast, and it looked like once you got on big bikes, you didn't care anymore. Like, you could still go fast, I but... Was six, I, I was 16, and I was in high school, and I got to party and girls, and I was over it. Yo, you were just, like, a consistent top, like, five all the time, but never, like... Yeah. I could tell you just weren't, like, pushing real hard. I'm like, he don't even, he's just riding around now. Yeah, I checked out for sure. But then <laughs> I, I started doing freestyle with you. At, at, I was like 16, I think, is when I first, when we first started like riding together, jumping ramps. and Well, before we even hit ramps. I was going to say, we weren't we were jumping at, ramps. Right. We were at, uh, what's his name, Carl's. We had that tabletop that we, we learned mo most of our stuff on. Yeah. And we'd start from one, we'd start from the high spots in the face with the best lip. And they would get yeah. rutted out, and then by the time we were done practicing, there would just be ruts clear across the whole entire face of it. Yep. Good times. I'm 120. I'm 125. I think you're around a 250. I may have at first ridden a 125. I definitely did when we first did shows. Do you remember we went to um, Baltimore, the arena with that uh, with the stage at the one end? Yeah, yeah, you rode up on the stage. Yeah, and I went to hit the thing first and went like 15, 20 feet past the landing, nose down, like still had motocross suspension on my 125. We had to hit it in third. Yeah. And I rolled down the thing. I was like first, second, third, and I just even, I was like going to grease it, drop my front end, and I'm like 15 feet into the flat and just fucking smoke it. I like b blew my hands off, barely get back on. I turn around, come back in the in the arena, and your dad's going, a little, you know, slow down. <laughs> I'm like, oh no shit, I shouldn't go that <laughs> fast again. <laughs> yeah, I those I hated riding. I thought it because I was I rode one twenty five for a couple of years before I got to two fifty, but um, hitting ramps on one twenty five sucked. I remember it was always third gear, and then I remember, um, like, there was a couple um, IFMAs that I rode that I, I couldn't do the side ones because the uh, it was just too tight. I was there I for the, that. Yeah, well, there's a couple of them, but I remember the one, I think it was in Philly, um, Dave Turner, uh, he was like, dude, just just hit it wide open second gear, you, you'll make it. I'm like, I don't know, dude, I was still like, <laughs> motoed out, you know, so I was hitting third. He's like, just trust me. Well... I hit it wide open second and did not make you know, it. No, 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 <laughs> freaking like I probably had my back tire like a foot on the back side. I, I rode it out, but I ended up like jamming my wrist real good. I think I actually cracked it. Um, I duct taped it for the for the show and rode it, but um, second second gear on the one twenty five. It was only I think it was only like sixty five feet too. And uh, nope, definitely. Definitely not a good idea to hit him in the second on 125. How so small was it. this floor that the IFMAs had it at 65 feet? And how short was the run? The runway had to have been like 30 feet at the most because they... It was, it was tight. <laughs> I remember they had like little berms, but um, it wasn't an, an, like long enough to get in the third. So there was a couple that I rode that literally like a goon. I had to... I think Bartram was still on 125 too. He did the same. Same thing. No, there the was some cast. dude that we was. Only the one. There was some dude the there. 
there was some dude there from Canada come down with Andy Bell that was on a KTM 125 as well. Remember? And he had to seat bounce everything. That was like one of the very first ones I did, like Hampton or something like that. Or, or um, uh, Cincinnati in like 01. Ian yeah, but I remember something. We, we had to skip the side ones. We yeah. Jump the middle one and then pin it all the way back to the tunnel and just keep keep jumping the middle one. It was terrible when I look back at it, but I was only like 16 or 17, so I was just pumped just to ride those things and to make a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, we also did the very first amateur freestyle motocross contest ever at E Town. Right, Raceway Park. Yeah, which is uh, that thing. Harmon was there, wasn't he? Yeah, remember he's. If, well, I've talked about this before on here. He's got in. Um, there's a couple clips of him crashing his ass off on Krusty from there. Oh, he had camo shorts on, right? Yeah, if you watch at the <laughs> end of one of the Krustys, like I don't know what it was, two or three or something like that. They show, it's like in the credits, I think, just about. But they show him just come up short as hell. And then another time, like, he just clipped his back wheel on the face of the safety and then got bucked over his bars. Just kept getting I remember, up. I think, I think his last crash, he did a heel clip here and, like, decked it and, like, went over the bars. And I think he, he might have broke his collarbone or something. But he literally, those were just dirt jumps, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. when they um they had us qualify over on the motocross track. They turned the right. uh, finish line triple into a freestyle jump. Yeah, but, I remember that. So, but that that one was like a tabletop. So Hartman's over there jumping three quarters of the way on the tabletop. He's not even making it to the downside. He's just landing. He's doing these tricks and landing on top and bouncing over the knuckle like to the downside. And they go, "Okay, you qualified." And we go over to the uh, dragway, and it's like seventy-five feet like clear cut double there's probably like a 10 foot safety on the landing and the takeoffs are like 12 feet tall and they just built it like two days before so it just starts getting rutted immediately and that dude's never even like he wasn't even clearing the jump over on the other side and they're like all right here you go he crashed like two or three times right yeah (laughs) (laughs) dude that's the thing Ethan messed me up. Um, I did another show there. They built just a triple on the grass, on the drag strip. They called me and uh, Robbie Wood to come hit it, mm-hmm. test it out. I was still on 125. Dude, it was 90 feet. So we were hitting it. Robbie was jumping it on 250. I kept doubling, kept doubling. And then I remember I grabbed fourth, dude, and just pinned it. And I hit the face, and I sunk in on the takeoff because uh, it was still pretty soft. Yeah. And I ended up backsiding it, the triple, and just grenaded myself, um, tore my ACL, compressed the vertebrae in my back, and I, like, cracked my tib-fib, like, up top, like, where it meets my knee. Damn. And uh, I was six, I was 16 when that happened, because it was a 99. And um, I remember right then, my dad was so pissed, because I was still, like, racing. And he's like, he's like, that's it. He's like... You're, he's like, you're fucking picking one or the other. Um, I ain't doing most of this shit. You're either all in with the, with the freestyle or you're all in on racing. And I'm like, well, shit. Freestyle, I don't have to train, really. And uh, yeah. get fucking drink beers and smoke weed and hang out and make make way more money. So yeah, that, I went that route. But, um, dude, the 125 life was... It was rough. Not, was, not luxurious. <laughs> Yeah, it was rough for sure. I mean, because I had a 252, but I liked the 125 better. Like, I was a 125 guy. So, when I went to ramps, the very first time I hit it down at Robbie's, I had a um, 125. And then that first winter we did, I used a 125. And then after that, I was like, I'm just going to start riding the 250 because everybody on 250s can clear these jumps and... Without screaming yeah, couple, from the tunnel. Yeah, after a couple of those IFM, IFMAs that I rode where I couldn't do the side ones, I went and I was still racing actually then. And I, my dad got me a 250 and I remember hitting ramps on it for like the first time and like doing seat grabs and shit. Like it was, 
it felt so stable and like yeah. so good and it was and it was so easy i'm like fuck dude dude that's never, that's never how a four stroke like, is i wouldn't know other than the I'm engine still, brake i'm still keeping it old <laughs> Dude, you would get on a four-stroke and you would go, like, running at ramps is brainless now. Like, you don't have to, you know, like, so the very first show I ever rode on a four-stroke was a, a monster truck show. Polished concrete floor. They got dirt in the middle. There you go. And um, the dirt is breaking off of the edge of the, edge of, like, the pad in the middle. And it's be getting powdery, like, on the... Uh, concrete so the uh, monster trucks are making all this dust well they come out with a hose and hose the dust down on the on the concrete to so that you know <laughs> so we were turning around on the concrete and then getting on to the dirt and i'm like could you make it any slicker possibly maybe just dump some oil here or something so anyway on the four stroke and then the dirt was like play-doh so on the four stroke i just turned the corner roll it on it had traction on the uh, concrete and then i would get into the dirt that was soft and i would just continue to roll it on if i was on a 250 two stroke i would have been clutching it on the concrete to not spin then i would have been clutching it in the dirt to try to get the thing to rev up and all i did was twist the throttle it was great dude there's nothing wrong with a little, a little clutch action right? <laughs> It was so much less to think about. <laughs> ramp. I, am, I am the clutch god, dude. Hey, hold on a second. I had a little spillage here. Honey. Honey. Oh, can you get me a hit the bell, please? What'd you do? Shake that Honey. one up? Dude, my fridge outside, my garage, it's where I keep my beers. It's so cold that it's like a little frozen and it yeah. just spilt everywhere when I, when I cracked it open. Yeah. Thank you. I um, was up in New York State for, uh, my girlfriend and I were in New York State for New Year's Eve, and um, I bought beers that were room temperature and drove, like it was like negative 15 or 20 or something, and I drove like 30 minutes with the beers in the back of my truck, and when I went to open them, nothing would come out of any of them, they just started foaming over like that. <laughs> There's a fine line between the perfect and plush beer. Yeah, that mine was a little overdone as well. It's a little overcooked. So do you just turn your um your refrigerator down super low, or is it because it's cold outside? I don't know what it is. But um, that for whatever reason, that fridge in my garage is like always super cold. It, you, I usually don't have the the frozen problem, but maybe because it's it's been pretty chilly here the last like, couple weeks. Maybe that had a little something to do with it. I don't know, but You're getting extra frosties. That was not good. Um, have you been watching Supercross? Yeah. I feel like that yeah. was a silly question. Uh, does your do you play fantasy Supercross or anything? No, I've done it before. Um, I feel like your brother would be a good person to talk to about that. My brother is a good person to talk about any of <laughs> he's, he's the stat, He's the stat boy. Yeah. Be like, who, yeah, who do you think is going to win? Um, what's that? Be like, go, who's going to win? He's like, well, I heard uh, Barsha jammed his ankle, so. Right. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes that hurts you, though. He, he knows so much because he's like one of those people that just talks to everybody. So he has all this all insider info. Uh-huh. And then it like it hurts him in the end. I feel like because I, I did my fantasy league with him one year, or I was in a fantasy league with him one year, and I actually ended up beating him. And um, like I'd be I'd be like talking to him about picks and stuff, and he's like, "Oh yeah, well, yeah, Anderson kind of, you know, twisted his ankle in practice and blah 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 blah." And I'm like, "Well, I'm just gonna roll, yeah. roll with whoever," because he he just overthinks it with stuff like that, but. Um, he is he is that boy. Somehow he knows every little thing about everything. He's good at That's what, like good. when he texted me this week about, about that track in Long Island. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna I have no idea. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. He's like, Oh yeah, he tells me the name of it and he's like, Oh, it's closed down, he gave me the whole spiel that like, <laughs> somebody like offered them millions of dollars for the land and they sold it and then how like the um the freaking owners like cheated on his wife with some twenty year old, and he's like fifty, and he gave me like the whole the whole scoop on it, dude. 
So is that why he lost the track? I have no idea. No, well, I guess someone wanted to buy the land and they offered him a bunch of money, but um, I think he needed money because... Because he still wasn't making anything off of motocross? He needed the money because he got caught cheating on his wife uh, and he was going through an divorce. <coughs> he needed it for alimony. Yeah, and child support because I think he has a couple kids Ooh. as well. Sticky situation. I wonder how good that What's vagina that? was, if that was good enough to ruin that whole deal or not. I mean, he's, he, I think he said he was 50 and the chick was like 21 or 22. Or so something. it was worth it to him. He was like, fuck it. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, worth every, worth every time. <laughs> uh, um, so who, you, who uh, do you think ultimately is going to win the championship? For Supercross, four fifty. Um, it's tough. I think it's going to be between um, Anderson and Tomac. Yeah. I think I'm hoping Anderson wins. I like Anderson, and Tomac's kind of he's one of those dudes that either wins or gets like twelve. You know? Yeah. I, so I, I think I think I think Anderson's going to win. And as much as people go, he's not. He doesn't crack under pressure and this and that. I mean, I would say that. You know, in the um, in the lights, he didn't, or whatever you want to call it, he didn't. But I think that now, whether he's putting more pressure on himself or whatever the deal is, he has been, you know, like having problems late in the season. Even if he's got a point lead, still ends up making. Like, were you at New Jersey last year, or do you have a show? I actually wrote the demo in the pit party before the Supercross. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because I got there and was drinking and then called. I didn't even go in until this race started into the arena. We just, or in the stadium, we just hung out in the parking lot drinking. And then I finally got in and I was texting Brody and he was like, I'm already gone. <laughs> I'm on yeah, the turn bike. Um, I think it was Seth Beaton. They freaking, they boned out like right after the show. I didn't realize that. I don't know why. I forget why. They had something to do or something. Yeah. Um, but so that was a weird deal with him there, you know, same thing. Like all of a sudden he just rode around, you know, should have been able to pick really people up. You were I drunk was. too. We started drinking as soon as we finished riding. Sounds about right. old lady had a couple nightcaps. Have you heard anything about this year? Are you doing it this year? No, there's no, there's no Jersey Supercross this year. Oh, that's right. Duh. But there is one in Foxborough. I've done that one before. Um, and froze your ass off or what? It actually wasn't that cold because it's <laughs> in like April, I think. Yeah. It's still hit or miss. But, yeah, but I don't I don't think I'm going to do it this year. No, you're circus in it. I think I'm just going to stick to the... Stick on the old circus. It's not really worth it to just... It's the same pay and shit, so I might as well just stay with the... With right. the old universal... You got a home there, man. Home away from home. <laughs> uh, did you hear the, the wife? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's how they are. You When you do circuses, you better just buckle down and be like, I'm here, because that's what you're going to be. All right. All Corn. week. <laughs> Yeah, we, we'd have like two days off, but they would be driving or whatever. So it's like you were just there the entire time. See, we, uh, the circus we were on would do big buildings on the weekends. And then during the week, they would do um, some like smaller arenas that the ceilings were too low or, or whatever that we couldn't ride in. So yeah. um, we just wouldn't ride. We'd get like two days off during the week or whatever. But it wasn't enough time to go home. We'd just... Find some campground to get drunk. Yeah, this one's a grind, dude. It's six days a week, but it's it's pretty easy. It's five jumps, so I mean, it's not even not even a warm up. But um, it's thirteen shows a week. Yeah. And, um, but it was it was sweet. It was in it's in my area for like three months. It was in like Brooklyn, Queens, um, Newark like a bunch of bunch of New York places too. So I went home every night for like almost three months. It was like having a nine to five. I'd get home at like 10 at night and then I'd leave at like nine in the morning. 
Yeah. Go back. Well, it's a little longer. Than a... It was. It was only like an. It's like an hour drive, unless it, like Newark's only forty minutes, but the rest of it was only a little over an hour with traffic and stuff. But the only the only killer was it was dude it was thirty three dollars in tolls. Round I was trip. just gonna ask that because <laughs> <laughs> the the bridge it was expensive, but yeah, the like George Washington itself or whatever is like twelve bucks. 17. <laughs> oh, they upped it. <laughs> yeah, 17 bucks. But it's it's worth it to come home and see the fam, so. Yeah. My daughter gets super bummed when I'm not home, so. And so does the wife. I'm sure. So if I can come, if I can come home for a night, sit in my own bed, it's worth it. Right. Yeah. And see everybody, be around the kid. Yeah. Make sure she still remembers who her dad is. Yeah. Yeah, that show, that, that tour's 11 months long, dude. Well, and that's the thing is that nobody is giving you, uh, you know, amount of shows like that or run like that. Yeah, no, it's it's consistent, dude. It's every single week for 11 months. So it's, it's like a real job. Yeah. There's no, like, it's, it's nice, though. It's not like, you know, you get a show and then, you wonder when the next one's going to be after that. You, it's it's like clockwork every week. So yeah. It's a paycheck. It's a grind being away for that long. But the riding's easy. It's five jumps, two a day, and then three on Saturdays and Sundays. Mon- Monday's off. But um, it's it's work, so yeah, can't be better. Do you remember when we first started doing uh, circuses? Everybody's giving us a hard time. Yeah, I was probably one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you were. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, man. It's yeah. funny because everybody hits me up now because I was I lived out west for nine years, and then like the shows kind of dried up. There's just too many riders. Yeah. You know, and like I lived in Reno where you have you know Mike Mason, Adam Jones, Matt Byton. Drake McElroy, Dustin Miller. So I was like bottom of the totem pole, you know, to like get shows. Yeah. So it started getting like, it started getting like really hard. So I moved back home to Jersey and then, um, there's not many flippers on the East coast. So it, like the work was just like flowing in and now all those dudes out West are hitting me up. They're like, Hey dude, I'll, I'll send a bike to your house and yeah, let's do some shows. They're eat shit out here. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, yeah. I'll see what I can do. Well, that was my whole deal. Like, funny. I wish I had gone out west when you did, but I basically thought that the scene would have gotten bigger over here than it did. So I was like, I'm going to um, set myself up here. And then when the sport gets really big here, I'll already have the ramps and blah, blah, blah. And it just never fucking got big. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's busy now, though. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I mean, but it is stuff like circuses, which I mean is whatever. But hey, the way the way I look at it is, all that money gets deposited the same same way. If yeah, it's no, I agree. At a cool ass show out west or a circus back east, you know. Yeah, for sure. I've learned I've learned that over the years. When I was younger, I was like, you know. Believe me, I wrote all the crap forever. That shit. I wrote I, know. I wrote crap forever, so. They're like, we're going to jam you inside of this little building over here. We got a fair going on. We're going to set you in the... And I'm like, Ugh, we can't jump in here. Like, what? No, you're going to have to. All right, we're jumping 40 feet then. All right, cool. Fuck. <laughs> Dude, I flipped 48 feet. We were in... Um, That's insane. Uh, ramp to ramp. We were in um, Green Greenville, North Carolina or something. And they had Legends cars. It was Monster Truck Show, but then they had Legends cars. So the whole floor, the whole dirt base, had banked um, banks on either side, you know, for the turns. So I literally had to set my ramps up inside of the banks and roll over top of the, like, up the side, over the bank, in, hit the ramp, land, go over the next bank, and then roll back out. Dang. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not about that short life. I don't think I've ever ridden a show under 60 feet, maybe. Well, 62. 
Because you're riding for this fancy circus. You need to come and ride for the other Well, circus. no, the, the, cir- <laughs> the circus is it's 73, actually. Yeah, and your ra- landing's all raised up. It looks cool. It looks like it's fun. Yeah, I mean, it. it's kind of, it was sketchy to hit, like, the first couple times because you have no run stuff in there. Because you can't yeah, see yeah, anything and you have no, no run by? Yeah, there's no speed checks. You just want <laughs> you know, Set it and forget it, but um, it's it's not as bad once you jump it a couple of times with the first the first few. It's kind of it's kind of sketchy, but um, but well, not sketchy, but just kind of it's different. It's tight. Like the circus, the the the, the big top tent. It's, you know, you're right there, like at the ceiling. So like, and you're coming through all the the lights, the lighting, and all the scaffolding and stuff. So. Once you get used to that, it's, it's it's super easy. The only like, the only sketchy part is when you ride back to the ramp. You ride underneath the bleachers. And you're just getting slushy bombs, and <laughs> chicken wings dropped on you, and popcorn. Like literally before the last two jumps, we flipped, and I I was going underneath, and I a big slushy covered my lens of your literally goggles. Like the slip train. So like I'm like rubbing it and it's just smearing the syrup like all across my lens. I couldn't see shit. Like literally, on the way to the ramp, dude, I was like I couldn't even see it. It was all, all muscle memory, and it was like it was super sketchy. Like that, that's that's like the worst part. But I guess this year coming up, they changed it. I guess Ro got it all set up now. We're gonna come back inside and he's got like uh, fun boxes set up. So nice. Way better. Do some nose wheelies and so wheelies and stuff. Jason's just Make gonna ride things. around and do the little nibby fun box and stuff because he and I would get stuck on like a thirty foot hip somewhere. There'd be ramps and stuff, and then there'd be this little hip on the side of a landing, and we'd spend like two hours like over there on this little jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the funnest part. I'll be little, yeah. Little yeah, we were at Chuck's house and he had this little hip on the side of a landing, and we literally rode it for an hour. And we're like, everybody's jumping all these big jumps around us, and we're just like circling around, hitting this little thing on the side we, of the landing. We used to do that at Jesse Olson's house, his parents' house. They had a little little compound there, and we would like go hit hit ramps a bunch, and then we'd stop, freaking get some lunch. So I can get stoned and then not want to hit ramps anymore. And we would just go and do nose wheelies the whole time, wall ride, little hips, not even touch a ramp for the rest of the day. And for the next two, three hours, just jump little 20, 30 foot hips. And yeah, well, didn't he have a ton of that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah, a bunch of, bunch of cool stuff. He had like a full, I don't know what you want to call it. It was like a supercross motocross track down bottom. It was kind of like open like a motocross track but he had a bunch of tech super cross lines you know so it was uh-huh. it was fun it was that place was, was pretty rad that's where they had like the jump up house up there. what movie was that in one of the very first on the pipes or one of the, one of those i'm not i don't even remember which one not i don't it wasn't i think it was three or four maybe um I can't even remember, but yeah, like Villa was there and um, Andre Villa and Jake Windham, Drake. Yeah. And um, yeah, we we're jumping over like that house. It was pretty sweet. Is Jesse still doing dirt work? Have you talked to him at all? Dude, I have not talked to him. He changed his number. He met this chick, got married, knocked her up, changed his number. I haven't heard or talked to him since. It's probably been like three years. Yeah. He was he was always and I only met him a couple times, but he was uh, always super nice and fun. Had, yeah, he's he's the one that got me out west. Like when I was doing the IF maze and we kind of buddied up. He was like one of the first my first West Coast friends, and he was always telling me, "Dude, you got to come out west. Got to come out west. This is where it's at." So when I moved out to Reno, he was my roommate, and. He was just super cool. Like he introduced me to everybody, and that's kind of how I I met everyone in the whole the whole Reno crew. Did the whole deal, but he um, he just got over it. I don't know. He fell off the map. He was like riding, riding, got hurt, and then once like the flips came, he he did a couple of them off the kicker, and then he was just over it. And 
quit. But so. he was doing um, dirt stuff. He was building courses and stuff. Yeah, he's, he, was, he was building the courses for X Games and stuff. And then, dude, I don't know what happened. I haven't talked to him. He, he just dis- disappeared. Well, that's a bummer. That Even dude like, had skill. Like, shut down his Instagram. Like, it's done. Like, Damn. Don't even know how to get hold of him anymore. Wow. That's weird. Like, obviously, there's some... She, she was obviously a catalyst in this, I would imagine. Uh, he's, he's always kind of like that. He kind of... He bounced around with shit. He never, like, stuck to just one thing. But... Yeah, but that's like Oklahoma people just disappear. You ever notice that? <laughs> yeah. You talk um, to... Jimmy you, McGuire, he, he's, a, he's a cop now. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but he lives in California now. Graduated from Cal- Yeah. But think about everybody Brian, you know. Brian Dowdy, he, yeah. he disappeared. Yeah. I think the only steady one's been Elkins. Yeah. That's true, but when he goes back into Oklahoma, he just disappears as well. Yeah, probably because there's no cell reception. (laughs) And then he just emerges with some monster truck and takes it to SEMA. (laughs) (laughs) Airbags, bro. Uh, I got a piss real quick. All right. (sighs) Wish I had commercials to run. Maybe I'll just talk about my commercials. All right, yeah. Uh, Stroker Industries, you can buy the trigger, strokerindustries.com. You can buy the trigger so you don't spill, uh, gas on your graphics anymore. Um, and you can get the spit shine so that way you can silicone spray your bike, especially if you're at like a mud race or whatever. Uh, that way you don't have a bunch of shit build up underneath your fenders. Remember, we'd always do it with like Pam cooking spray or uh, WD-40. Which, I mean, I guess still work, but it's not as cool. And they have fog out for your goggles and windshield. Yesterday, or maybe it was today, it was so foggy I couldn't see out of my shit. I could have used that. Send me the damn fog out already so I can spray it in my truck. Um, and, I mean, the only things I got else is emoticons. But if you got a Android, you're done, son. You need an iPhone. Jeez, he's back. Yeah, if I'm staring at my kid up there. He's, yeah, and your wedding picture. Under the umbrella because it was a hurricane, dude. <laughs> Was it during Sandy? It's Irene. Uh, it was pretty gnarly. We got freaking strength. We were in upstate New York. And uh, it's like this little this little town and there's one way in, one way out, and it's just it was like a one lane bridge to get to get in and out and a freaking like a river ran through it. Whole thing overflowed. We got stuck there. It was I guess this, you know, good luck because they say if it rains on your wedding, it's good luck. And we oh yeah, had a hurricane, so. Well, there, there you go. go. <laughs> um, so did you just were you guys supposed to leave for a honeymoon or something or? Yeah, like a, well, a couple days. I don't even remember how many days was it after like a week or something. No, we were supposed to stay Wednesday after the day and then Monday. You were supposed to stay till Monday and leave Wednesday, and then. We only got stuck there for like I think one extra night, but um, dude, it was crazy. The whole place like flooded, trees were falling over. Every, no one could leave, so like, yeah, it had no power. The whole place was just underwater. So there was a lot of beer drinking going on, and yeah, that's a good huh? it. Did you go? Was it like a big town or what? Or were you guys in the middle of mm-hmm. nowhere? It's in the Catskills, dude. It's um, it's right by Hunter Mountain. Um, it's a really small town. It was it was just like this little, like resort place that like my wife and her family went to on vacation every year. It was like their their spot. So we ended up getting married there, and literally, um, the reception was at like four o'clock, and it, of course. The ceremony was at four. Sorry, oh, I'm <laughs> the, the wedding lingo. The, and then um, 
the bridesmaids were running late, like getting ready. So it didn't, we actually didn't start till like 4.30 and about 4.15-ish, it just started downpouring, like windy as hell, branches falling. So we actually ended up having to move it inside because it was supposed to be an outdoor one. And we got married in a barn. Dude, true, there, true, burly fashion, you know. There is a um, wedding place like a uh, a couple towns over, and the one I had uh, um, my cousin, I think no, it was some friends, yeah, and then one of my cousins got married in the same thing, and it's called the barn. Yeah, yeah, it's a big barn, and they just set it up like it's nice inside, but it is a barn. <clears throat> Network. <laughs> um so let's talk about uh the lights class. Who do you think's taking the two fifties? At least West I mean, since we've seen them at least. Don't ask don't ask me why. I do not like Sabachi. I have no reason for it. I just don't like him. Uh huh. But I think he's gonna win him unfortunately. Um I would like Seen Cirillo to win it. I like that dude, but um, it's too, it's too hot and cold. So yeah, I just don't think he has it in him to do it for however many rounds those guys run eight or seven or something. Yeah, but, I same with uh, same with McElrath. He's another dude that either wins or gets like fifth or sixth. You know. But, yeah, I thought for sure he was gonna win. Um... This past weekend with the three moto format, but did not happen. Blew it. Blew it. Uh, who? The, I also thought Anderson was gonna win because he normally gets good starts. Yeah. I guess, but he's probably hot and cold too on that shit. I I did not expect Tomac to come out and uh. I figured he was going to fade. I thought he'd put in a good race or two, but I didn't think he was going to ride that good and in all three of them. Yeah, with the shoulder and stuff. I was actually surprised that Sealy rode, rode so good. Yeah. Like I was I was pretty surprised he went one, two to start off, and then he got, like, whatever. He got seventh or something in the last race. But that was kind of surprising. Yeah. I, I think, um, going back to the lights thing, I think... Savaji, he seems to have a little bit of that mental issue too. Like, because he's always fast and he always wins races. But it's like, like you said, he either wins or he doesn't do anything. And especially when it gets later in the year and it, there's pressure on, he seems to have, you know, like the end of last year, he kind of rode around a couple of races where you were like, you can obviously go way faster than this. Yeah, he always like... That has stupid crashes. He tips over in corners. So it'd be like leading and front end will wash it out or something. Like it seems like it happens to him all the time. Yeah. Trying to go fast, I guess. Um, um, brain fades or something. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the front flip ramp? I feel like I already oh. have a fairly good uh, guess of what you're going to say, but... <laughs> I, think it's, yeah, I think it's super stupid like i get it but like jacko proved that you could do it without one so right but the issue is it's like uh backflips and flip tricks yeah you can do flip tricks without levers but you know not as many not as easily so i mean i think that's all it is is it's making what's possible in a flip you know, more so, and I, I agree to an extent, but I also think that the sport right now really needs something, and if it's a ramp to help you do front flip tricks, well, then I guess, you know, that's what it is. I agree, but I'm just, I'm not a fan. It's like the same thing with, like, Paget or Pages, whatever you want to call them, with that barrel roll ramp, how he has a little tab on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's gnarly. I would never do it. But it's like, are you going to bring like 
four different ramps or you know however many it is to every contest just so you could do like one or two tricks yeah so that thing actually i think just bolts on the top of the quarter pipe i think it bolts onto an existing <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, what are we doing right now? We're just searching for something to do, right? right. We're just searching for... I mean, there's only so much you can do off a regular ramp. That's, guess, right? that's what it is. I mean, we're just searching for something that will work, you know, and will make this sport elevate. And the problem is that instead of people putting more money into courses and stuff like that, they're just going... You know, by trying to make these crazy ramps, which I mean, I do think the quarter pipe is cool. Yeah, I like it. I think it's sweet, especially like the one that, that Nitro had. You know, that thing looks like pretty legit, smooth, and for the yeah. most part, pretty safe. Have you hit um, one? No, I haven't. I've never hit a quarter pipe. I feel like, to. yeah, I feel like you could probably do all right at that. Yeah, I think I could. Um, I just never had the chance to. I've never, never been around or been asked to. So it kind of came around when I was already back east, and well, you know how it is back here. Yeah, we're like, we're dirt we're hump jumpers. Change. We're not freestyle motocross <laughs> riders. We're dirt hump jumpers. I jump dirt humps, son. That's what I do. Another explosion, bro. <laughs> <laughs> really. You still got your paper yeah. towels from earlier? Yeah, but the thing is wetter than your sister's ass. It's probably true. <laughs> probably true. <laughs> All right. Uh, where do you keep finding these two strokes? What's that? Where do you keep finding these two strokes? T-shirts. Two strokes. Oh, two strokes. Dude, Yamaha, man. I know, but they're not... Oh, are they? They're still producing them? Oh, yeah. I thought that they stopped. I thought like no, 13 or 14 was the last year they actually produced a two-stroke. Dude, get with the probe. Why don't you Honda get with the program? They got... Or Suzuki? No. Uh, KTM are still uh, updating the two-stroke, bro. Why don't you get on that? KTM? Yeah. Is that a real question? <laughs> Dude, I would retire and get a, a, a normal 9 to 5 before I wrote a KTM 2 show. So what you're saying is you're not going to go gay for pay and ride quads, start flipping quads. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No chance. Uh, I always bust gutters, gutters and I'm like, listen, where's your, pl where's your guy's plow? I don't understand. <laughs> He's got it, dude. He's a farm boy. Oh, he I know. He has one. Oh, he I know. Does. But I like to, you know, give him shit about their race quads or, or whatever. He's, or he's like, oh, dude, I, I, got the, I got the John Deere in the barn, dude. I don't <laughs> need to put it on my quad. Yeah. Those guys are so fun. Well, at least John. I've only had a couple conversations with Derek, but John, like, gets it. He He's like, man, I wanted to ride dirt bikes. My parents, our parents wouldn't let us. Would they... They got us quads or whatever, so. Well, they're both they're both the same, Derek and John. They're like, they're hilarious, dude. I love both of them. I was talking, to, I talked to John all the time. Um, he like, he posted something on Instagram or like maybe an Insta, Insta story or something, and it was a huge RV. And like I commented on it, like DMs, and I'm like, damn rich boy, and he's like, bro, I've been trying to tell you, man, it's freaking. Quad, quad pay is way better than bikes. Like, oh, I know. I know it is, but I just, I don't, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Not that, like, I don't think it's, like, stupid or, or like, people bag on it. Like, it's just kind of gnarly. Like, like, yeah. Those things are sketchy. If you got uh, too much pressure in your one back wheel more than the other, you fucked. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't jump that thing perfect, you're eating shit. Yeah. Yeah, here's the thing, you know, like, so everybody hates on quads, but it's because, like, I didn't like quads growing up because if there was any jumps, they would roll up the face and, like, park at the top and then, like, give it gas on the top and make those two ruts in the damn face, you know, and ruin the faces. 
But and they would turn and look at their roost every time. Yeah, exactly. But these guys are jumping <laughs> big shit. So I mean, I don't know how you can how you can talk shit on them because you know they're throwing down. So it's like not even the same. It's a totally different scenario. Dude, quad quad riders caused me to break my arm, <laughs> compound fracture. Both my both my arm bones came out of the skin. I was on eighties. I was at Carl's. Titanium. Freestyle. And I came ripping around like an idiot first lap, not checking the track out, just going for it because I rode there a hundred times. And I came around like this blind, blind corner, hit it wide open, and a quad freak. It, used, it was like this, this peaky, this peaky jump. He rolled it a bunch, so it was all cupped out. And I hit it like fourth wide open on my 80. Nose dive, oh. over the bars, bone out of the skin. So I, I didn't like quad riders when I was about 13 or 14 years old. But and now the jump is called titanium. It is called titanium because I have two titanium plates <laughs> and 13 screws in my arm. But that wasn't Travis Spader rolling over that thing because Travis no, he, he was a fucking he monster. He was wearing that thing. Like all the other dudes <laughs> had, their, had their visors going like this. Yeah. Travis was a monster. He and especially there, like uh, he'd slide the inside of corners and stuff, and then clear stuff that I was having to, you know, go outside to the berm. So yeah. he he was like way faster, and I just couldn't even. I'm like, what? I mean, at the time, for people that don't know, the dude's name is Travis Spader. He was, at the time, the only Honda factory quad racer. Was like national champion, fitness freak. The guy was built like a truck, and could go fast no, he was he's pretty sweet he was cool dude too yeah i'm like how is this dude just demolishing me on this quad and he goes take it for a ride and i took it like for one lap and i brought it back and i was like not for me this, <laughs> dude, <laughs> this steering was so touchy that i was going down the straightaway just zigzagging back and forth and then he had like this super extra hard pull clutch on it so for training. And I'm like, I can't even ride this thing, dude. Just take it back. That's how serious he was with the workouts. He had his clutch tightened so he can pump them for him. So. Yes, I could barely I could literally barely pull his clutch in. And I was like, What's the deal? And he's like, oh, I just got it like that. So that when I race my race bike, the clutch is easy, you know like All right, dude. <laughs> I like an easy clutch. I'm not. I'm not about that four finger life. Yeah. No. I'm like want to just buy and ride new bikes all the time so that everything is. Although the throttles are a little bit too much when you get a brand new bike, you're all like, yeah, yeah, because they turn. What, you think they're too, they're too easy or something? Yeah, they turn too easy, and you're all just like out of control. You know, if you like clean them all the time, they stay easy. Yeah, right? well, I don't do that. I don't have, I don't have, listen, I don't have hippie around to clean my shit because I know you ain't taking the fucking throttle apart and lubing it. Dude, hey, true story, hippie has not worked on my bikes since the nuclear cowboy store. (laughs) Because you had a mechanic there? He was like, all right, you got a mechanic now. I'm like, I'm like, hippie, I need this thing legit. (laughs) New top end and the the whole deal. Now he's, he's older, he just. He just wants to hang out with my daughter. He doesn't give a shit about bikes no more. How about E Town? No more drags. No more drags. But are they getting rid of the moto? Are they now going to go no. to the um, practice track? No, they still have the practice track and they still have um, the main track? The main track. Oh, that's good. What'd you say? Yeah, they're like. Focusing on concerts more or something else. So in that back parking lot where we where we jumped uh, Rampzilla, they're gonna have concerts. <laughs> the biggest safety deck known to man. Yeah, those things are sweet though. At least after they yeah. finish the uh, run out. I gotta plug this thing in. I'm uh... run out of battery. Ten percent on this on the old iPad. Uh oh. My iPad has one of those big ass old plugs. Really, the, the old, the old fatty one. Yeah. I got a retro iPad. I just got this one. It's new. So funny story. Um, went to Australia for five weeks 
and my wife was flying out with my kids. She's only like one and a half or something. She's never been on a flight. A flight to Australia is like fucking 18 hours or something. And um, so I'm like, oh, just buy an iPad, you know, to keep her occupied. I try to stay away from the electronics with the kids, but I'm flight forward. So got the iPad, came back. They came to the search last year. And I have I have this seat or this chair, you know, this full chair. How long? Four months. Four months after we bought this iPad, fucking thousand dollars, whatever the hell it is. I have one of those fold up chairs, and it has in the armrest has a like a zipper with a cooler in it, like a little like cooler lining and shit. So, long story short, it rained one night. We were in Atlanta, and um, we had the iPad outside, and I was like messing around with it. And I had like no place to put it, so like an idiot, I freaking dropped the iPad into the cooler because it fit, not thinking that it rained the night before, and there was about three inches of water sitting in it. Nice. I had no idea. I left it fucking sitting in there for about an hour before I realized that I pulled the iPad out, fucking dripping wet, done. So iPad took a shit after having it for four months, and I was still paying it off. I did like the little add to your bill plan, payment plan thing and then shipped it back and then long story short again they never got it they said they never received it but i ended up getting a brand new ipad like two weeks ago maybe uh -huh. like it took like every bit of six to eight months to get it back but um sticking it in the cooler of my fold-up chair yeah that's probably not not a good idea <laughs> not ideal did you have the insurance on it or did you, were you just like no i don't i don't do that stuff. i don't either but that's why i was like i'm pretty sure they would just tell me hey sorry dude yeah you're, you're shit out of luck sorry about your fucking ipad I, my wife called and fucking raised hell about it so if i called they would have told me to go fuck myself yeah, because you'd have been like me, and they would have been like, no, and you'd be like, oh, that sucks. All right. Yeah, all right, sorry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what are you drinking? Magic Hat. I thought you were drinking like a Canada Dry or something. Canada Dry, yeah. New Jersey oh, Dry. You're one, of, you're one of those IPA snobs, huh? No, I, I'm actually not really an IPA fan, but... um. Like, so here's another, I just bought a 15 pack with three different ones in it. So, but, uh, like this one's not very IPA. 4.5, you know, huh? Yeah. This other one is, uh, one I just finished is 6.7. 6.7? Six, seven. Six, seven? Yeah. I'll just be over here with my 4.2s. Keep it traditional. <laughs> All right, let me grab another one. Oh. Yeah, hey, I need to do the same. Here's the other one. It's a um, five point eight. So open it over the sink, then. How about that? So my computer, my computer. Oh, you buy Chris Seven fifty nine. Yeah, there you go. Remembering, you're a little stat man too, huh? No, I just remember your, your number. That's all. I ain't like. Ain't Dude. <laughs> Dude, I raced. Um, cause uh, I haven't ridden at all. I mm -hmm. rode like twice this year, and I went and raced amateur class at uh the vet race at English Town. And the first race, I got like a... Plus, four, plus 40 class, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Two more years. <laughs> I rode like plus 30. And uh, I come at... I got like a third place start. I passed a guy. I won the first moto. And afterwards, he comes up and he goes, aren't you A class? And I was like, dude, I haven't raced in like, well, 15 years. Which is a lie. I did... I got hurt racing, but I hadn't even ridden at all, so... 
And I had no card, and uh, English Town's the worst with, like, if you don't have a district card that says you're an A class, they won't even let you out in A practice. <laughs> so uh, I just rode to B class, and he's like, aren't you A? He's all mad, like, mad that I beat him or whatever. And then I was like, yeah. And he said that he, uh, I was in the A class when he was racing the 80s or something. And I was like, <laughs> Makes you feel nice and old, huh? Yeah. And then the second one. So, I mean, I'm 38. So, I mean, he must have just turned 30 probably. Or maybe he's a little older than that. So, second moto, I hole shot. And I'm just, like, checking out. And then I, um, the jumping into the corner before the elevator. I went, it, they, yeah. like, so they, in the morning, they had this youth race and qu youth quads. So that you know that the track was basically just like outside lines. All you had was big berms on the outside yeah. and that was it. So uh, they walked it, and it was weird. It got like bumps and they like back dragged it and then watered the shit out of it, but didn't really like pack it in or anything. So in between the braking bumps, there was just loose mud, you know, instead of like it looked flat. But then when you rode over it, there was just like soft sinkholes. And I ended up just jumping into the turn, weird my front end, washed and got my leg stuck under the bike. And then the first, the second two, second and third end up passing me. I passed them back. I got <laughs> second, but. This is, this is what I'm dealing with right now, dude. Nice. Suck no, it down. Nice. Suck it down. Likes fun. You can't waste that. Uh, one time. We were somewhere, and somebody knocked a beer over, and your dad goes, I'd rather see a church burn. <laughs> yeah, that, was his, that was his go-to. That's his go-to line. He goes, yo, don't spill that. Dude, I'd rather see a church burn. Dude, funny, funny story. Do you remember? Pretty sure I told this one, but go ahead. About the first time we, we busted my dad smoking weed? Uh, I don't know who busted who. Exactly. Okay, so you know what? To this day, <laughs> that has not been figured out. But you, we were going to like Iowa or something. No, right? we were going to... I remember this trip very clearly. It's the trip I broke my wrist. We were going to um, uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin? Uh, to do the IndyCar race. And we were supposed to practice yeah. whatever Friday or something inside the uh, middle of the track. And it rained all day long. And then they ended up making us practice in the parking lot. There were, Mark Burnett was there. It was Mark Burnett's ramps. And you, me, and Jason Thorne. And uh, Thorny. you remember? And then they put us out in the parking lot. And you jumped the ramp. And it took you a while to like come back around. And as I'm going at the ramp, I like I turn the corner and I see your dad wave at me. So then I kind of look back and he's not waving anymore. So I like get back on the gas and then um, I'm like 50 feet in front of the ramp and I see him running at the ramp, like waving his arms. And I was like, shit. So I get on the brakes on the face of the ramp and I spun around totally backwards and end up jumping off of the thing, broke my ankle and my wrist. Uh, and there was a car, a minivan had parked at the end of the uh, landing while we were riding. You don't remember any of that? How do you remember all this? Yo, this, I really don't remember anything, but for some reason I remember <laughs> this. <laughs> it seems like you know, you remember it quite a lot. I remember this trip. So that was the trip on the way out there. You, like per normal, get in the back of the truck and then that's it. You're asleep. Right. On road trip. Oh, yeah. Ray is Derek Jr. because Ray's the exact same way. As long as you're driving, they will sleep in the vehicle. So, right. yeah, he's the exact same way. <laughs> He'll just get in there and that's it. He's asleep. And then you just you stop him. You're like, when you stop to pull in someplace, he'll get up. But he's pretty much just asleep the whole time. So we're driving. Derek is asleep in the back or whatever, laying there. And <clears throat> your dad... We're driving and he looks over and he goes, which we smoked all the time. So I knew this, but your dad looks over and he goes, uh, Derek smokes weed. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I go, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm pretty sure he smokes. And I go, why do you say that? And he goes, I found this joint in the, or this roach in the ashtray. So he opens the ashtray and there's this big old roach sitting in the ashtray. And I was this just, is, this is news to me. I did not hear this story before. Dude, this is how it happened. So he's like, you must have actually been asleep then. Yeah, sure. No, you heard it because he's like, he, he's like, uh, check out this joint. He goes, I didn't put this in here. So we're driving and then like an hour later, it's like a 15 hour drive for us. An hour later, you just hear from the back seat, you know, it would make this ride a lot better. And, <laughs> and I was like waiting for what the answer would be. And you just go, if you lit that joint, none of us said anything. He doesn't say anything. I don't say anything. We're just waiting. And then Dude, like, I think we have, we have different, different angles on the story. Dude. And then like 20 minutes later. We hear it again. Man, you know it would make this trip better. So then your dad goes, fuck it. Light it up. So then fire that's... Fire it up. Fire it up, whatever. So then that's that what happened. Nice word, dude. <laughs> dude, this is what I remember. I remember we were... Yeah, we were driving. We stopped to get gas. And my dad had to always put freaking coolant back in the... In the truck every time we stopped, mm -hmm. so he had the he had the hood popped up, and you got that little gap in between the hood, you know, that you could see. You were in the front seat, I was in the back. I don't know why I did this, but I reached into the freaking maybe I knew it was in there. I reached into the the ashtray, and I pulled it out, and I had no idea it was in there, but there was a little there was a rose in there, and I pulled it out, and it was it was straw. I remember it was strawberry rolling papers, which. I'm a blunt dude. It wasn't mine. I'm pretty sure because I told you because we went into the bathroom. Yeah, I remember you, know, you told me about it. I was I like, your that. dad. Your, I said, your dad found your joint. You go, it's not mine. And I'm like, what? And he goes, you go, right. that's not mine. So we get in the truck and that's, he goes, this is your right. weed, this and that. And you go, it's not, or no, that's what it was. You were laying in the back and you just go, we were talking back and forth and you just go, it's not mine. And we're like, what? No, I remember it. Hey, so I, I like reached in, I reached in the ashtray, I pulled it out. And as I was pulling out, I see my daddy looks under in that little, the little crease under the hood. And he gets his little shitty grin on his face. And like, put it back in there. Because I, I, I knew, I knew that he smoked, but I didn't, I didn't know, no. And then we were driving on the road and we were quiet for like, dude, it had to be 10, 20 minutes. No one said a word. And then I remember my dad just turned around and he goes... Well, let's fire it up. And I'm like, I was like 17, 18 at the time. You know, I'm like, fuck. About, about the freaking, rather see a church burn <laughs> with, the, with the spilled thing. We were smoking and it gets down. To, dude, it was nothing, dude. It was like burning my fingers. And I go to fucking throw it out the window. And it like blows back in. And he goes, what did you do? And I'm like, I threw it out the window. goes, what the fuck's wrong with you? are wasting fucking weed. He's like, I got a bowl. You throw it in the bowl. And I'm like, it's like laying on my lap. And you're like burning a hole in my fucking pants. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I got it. I got it. He's like, fucking kids these days talking about this shit. Dude. Yeah, you were asleep. He started, he's like, I I think he smokes. And then, yeah, I, we went into a, a gas station and I told you. I said, hey, your dad found that joint or whatever. And you're like, it's, what do you mean? You're like, I didn't smoke in there. One of my friends or something used the truck. So we go back out there. And then, yeah, I think then all of a sudden, first you chimed up with, it's not mine. And then you explained all that. And then we were quiet for a while. And then you go, you know, it would make this ride better. <laughs> <laughs> and then like another, like the half an hour later, you said it again. And then your dad was finally to, to like. This day, to this day, nobody owns up to it. We don't, it's, it's the mystery joint. Nobody, nobody knows uh, where it came from. No idea. Cause I, I only, sm I only smoked once with my friends. So it, it for sure wasn't mine. And my dad is a joint dude, but it was, it was, it was strawberry paper. I remember. And, and to this day, fucking 20 years later, whatever it is, 18 years later, he swears it's not his. Yeah. That's how that started. Cause he was like, I found this in the, in the, ashtray and he just pulls the ashtray over <laughs> I was just like I'm not saying anything I'm gonna let these guys sort this out on their own 
Oh, shit. But you guys called him hippie forever before that. So Yeah, because he had <laughs> long hair. He had the mustache. Drank beers. We knew that he smoked, but we didn't know. So we we call we still call him hippie. I still call I don't even call him that. I still call him hippie. <laughs> That's awesome. But he he don't have the long hair anymore. He cut the hair, no facial hair. Oh yeah. Was well, he trying to clean it up? Shit, so all his hair fell out. Oh shit. I mean, it grew back, but it's not not what it was. Alpecia. What is that? It's like when your hair falls out, dude. Your freaking eyebrows, like everything. Like no no hair anywhere. What? Yeah. What the hell dude, crazy causes that? I was still living out I was still living out west when it happened and last time I saw him he was hair down to the you know, middle of his freaking back, big old mustache, big goatee. Went out you know, went went back out west and I didn't come home for like six months or something. And like my, my mom told me that he had like this disease or whatever. It wasn't like life threatening or anything, but I came home and I had no idea like what to expect, but he had, dude, he had no hair, no eyebrows, no facial hair, no nothing. I've never seen my dad with, without a mustache, like in my entire life. He looked, no joke, 20 years older than the last time I saw him, six months before. It was crazy. But um, he like, went to the doctor, got, like all these crazy steroid shots, to, like try to get hair back and all this, all this crap. But um yeah, it's freaking. He's got like a tiny little mustache, and that's it, man. I mean, he's got some hair, but does he have eyebrows? Not, not. Yeah, like faint, dude. But it's white. All his hair is white now. Like he turned it all white. He's got no armpit hair, no, no nothing. That's crazy. But he has a little bit, little bit on his head, and and a, and a tiny mustache, and like huh. little tiny little bit on his eyebrows. But he's only you wouldn't even like recognize him if if you haven't seen him lately. Wow. It's great. Did they ever go to E Town? Like, no, to watch like or Mike? anything? Yeah. Dude, my dad doesn't even come to my shows in Jersey anymore. Well, my parents never really went. They, I think, because they <laughs> just. They're, they're over it. Dude. Yeah. They're over, they're over fearing for our lives. So they're like, well, you're just going to yeah. stay home. Mom stresses <laughs> enough. So she wanted to see it in real yeah. life. Once, once the flip, flip started happening, she's like, she fucking checked out, dude. Dude, when um my parents were down in Georgia and I was flipping, I just started flipping and I was like, they're working at the barn and the course is right in the back. And I'm like, hey, come out here and check this out. So they come out. I jump the ramp like twice straight. I rip a flip. I ride by them. I do another one. I land and I look over. And they're just like face the opposite way talking. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, Not they, even watching. They, yeah, they saw the first one and that was it. They literally turned around and they were just talking to each other. And then they just started walking back. And that was it. That's funny. They went, I did a monster truck show after that. Or maybe it was before that in New Jersey that they came and they brought some other people. But I don't think they really, you know, they were over it. You can only watch your kid get hurt so many times, I suppose. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually you're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't for me anymore. I keep getting these calls. I'm in the hospital. My leg's broke or whatever. The last time I, I mean, got hurt, I waited days to tell my parents. You what? I waited days to tell my parents. It was like three, four days. I was like, hey, I broke my leg. You, know, like, you, never, you never want to call them. Yeah. <laughs> I was dreading it. What would you do if your daughter wanted to ride? I don't know. I get asked that all the time. I would like try to talk her out of it, but if she was like pretty, pretty set on it, I'd get her a bike. Yeah, that's hot. Uh, I don't know. We I got her this um, or I didn't. My my brother in law got her like this Mercedes, big wheel, you know, deal today. It's been so cold since Christmas. We haven't been able to take her out on it. But today it was like forty something degrees. So I took her out on the street today, and I think it's safe to say she's not going to be riding dirt bikes. Well, there you go. I mean, she's only she's only two and a half, but. 
she was just all over the place. She wasn't she wasn't grasping the concept of going straight. Yeah. <laughs> she was zigzagging everywhere. I mean, maybe that's a good sign. Maybe kid that it just goes straight, you gotta to worry play, about. Play golf or, or soccer or something. Yeah, tennis. Golf's where the money's at. Yeah, that's true. Get, get her some sticks. That's what I was like. Listen, how like, how good would I really need to get just to be able to finish like last in a tournament? You know, because they still I mean, get. I Gilmore did it. He made like thirty grand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. They still make like. 50 grand to get like last place like fuck i'm right. i'm in <laughs> Freaking quarter of my year dude yeah <laughs> yeah in one shot almost, almost, almost half actually <clears throat> shit well what else you got any sponsors you want to pump no no hippie no, fuck them all. hippie Oh, my dad ain't even my sponsor. Anymore, I'm, I'm the lone wolf. Now I have I have like a couple, but nothing, nothing too cool anymore. The Universal Circus and flat out freestyle. Pretty much. Buy my own gear. Yeah, you're on my. my cars. You're on my schedule now. It sucks, dude. <laughs> I know it. I tried to get um Drake on here, but he was like, he's like, eh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty mad at motorcycles right now. And then like a week <laughs> later, it was him flipping off some CC motorcycle hood or something. And I was like, ah, oh, he's got a little beef with the CC. Yeah, I don't know what happened if he got fired or whatever, but he's been with them a long time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like we wouldn't well. We wouldn't know who they were if it wasn't for Drake, I'm pretty sure. Right. As far as... I have no, no idea who they were until he was always repping it. Exactly. I think Hillside now is on that program. What is it? It's a coffee house or something, right? In, like, Seattle. Like, how does it... Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I, did, a, I did that... Um, Sacramento, the California State Fair, and Hillsack was there for the first weekend before, because Mason was uh, announcing the X Games or whatever, and then um, I asked him about it because he was like had like a bunch of stickers and he's always plugging it on Instagram and he said the same shit. He's like, yeah, it's like it's like a coffee house or something in Portland or wherever that yeah. is, you know, slash bike shop. And I'm like. I'm like, coffee shop? I thought it was like, motorcycles. He's like, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're like into it. I'm like, I just, I don't understand like how a coffee shop and fucking motorcycles. Well, I, I, else, but. I looked into it a little bit. So I think there is a motorcycle shop. But I think like the waiting room is a coffee shop. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So people just come in to get coffee anyway. You know, even if they're not getting their stuff worked on, I guess. I don't know how the name CC fits into any of that. Yeah, I mean, I agree. It's a really a strange... And if it wasn't for Drake, none of us would have any idea what the hell it was, so... Well, that was like Ro. Ro had a, a tattoo shop and a BMX shop yeah. together. Yeah. Which kind of goes hand in hand, so... Yeah. I mean, a tattoo is a little more extreme than a, than a coffee, I suppose, but... Yeah. Because I think he was on the right idea with that. He should probably, CC should probably have a tattoo shop in there as well. Sip of coffee, when you get your little. Drink coffee. Cross on your, your, broken, on your back. That's right. You get your bike fixed, you get your uh, cross while you're drinking coffee. Hardcore. Three, three birds, one stone. Yeah. <laughs> That's what says motorcycle <laughs> life more than that. Bike life. That's what it should be bike called. Life. Bike life cafe. Go ahead, dude. Start it up. Yeah. You know how many people out here... In your minute. It would have to be like... Um, I would have to cater to like the stunters out here. 
<laughs> the Philadelphia Wheelie Boys. Yeah, yeah, or Newark. I know old Nice. Yeah. Nice lives in Newark. Do you know Nice? Mm-mm. He's a Who's Nice. Nice is a street bike guy. Little white dude with this really long dreads, like halfway down his back. No. 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 I'm sure. Well, you probably haven't done that much stuff with street bike guys, I guess. I I only know him from this one show in Guyana. I did a bunch of times, and um, he always ended up coming down riding the street bikes. Why don't you do wheelies? You could be a wild out wheelie boy. Wheelies? I watch street bikes? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I haven't they don't even own a bike. You don't own what a street bike? Fuck no. Well they just ride dirt bikes down the street nowadays, so you could do that. Yeah, I'd probably get arrested for it. Yeah, bike life. Can't even ride up on dirt without getting busted around here. I've been down your boy, to the... Mo- your, your boy Moto Pimp will tell you all about it. Oh, I know. That's why I talked to him because he knows how to escape the police. I know. I went. I went and did um when he was filming his video way back ten whatever it was ten thirteen fourteen years ago. I think he's still. I think he's about <laughs> to put that one out. He might have. It usually <laughs> takes him about ten years to put a video out. Well, he said he's been working. He's got footage from like like exactly like ten years that he's about to. If you, if you watch that video, I think I have three different sets of gear on. I, think <laughs> I have like Chip, Shorty Lee, and something else. No, but he he hit me up to to come out and film um, a long time ago, and he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna go to Clayton's Pits, which is Clayton's pretty popular around here." And I'm like, "Yeah, but." Anytime you go out there, dude, you get harassed. Like weekday, weekend, harassed by cops. You get like you got like an hour window before they come out. And he had like this master plan to like park at this house and, and like ride in and don't have your name on the back of your jersey. Like this whole shit. I'm like, Well, I got my name on all my jersey, so there goes that. And he's like, No, 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 we'll be sweet, but we actually we didn't get we didn't get bothered at all. So I think we filmed during the week. It's a little a little less hectic. No, normally we ride Sundays because um, the guards aren't out there or something. Or they're not actively working. I don't know, but he told me, like, oh, he hit me up. He's like, yeah, we we built this jump. We want you to come hit it out. It's like it's like 160 feet. And, like, I'm like, dude, I've seen your videos. Like, the shit you film is sketchy, dude. I said, I don't want to come out and hit some sketchy 160 footers. He's like, no, 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 we... We built it with we built it with a like a fucking bobcat or whatever the hell it was. And I'm like, where the fuck? How did you get a bobcat in the down down in freaking Clayton's? And he's like, oh, dude, it's Universal Key. We went down there on Sunday and just fucking had a key for it and just started it up and fucking and, and built it because they got fucking machines down there. Yeah. I'm like, you guys are gnarly, dude. And then I, I went down there and, and and check it out and it was pretty legit. And then, um, like it was, it was super safe. It was just a giant tabletop. So I ended up hitting it, but, um, I think we hit that same thing without the minus the lip. You, me and Ryan Mills. Mills. That's funny. <clears throat> you remember fucking Dave Janolfi. Yeah. He hit me up like two or three days ago asking me if I've talked to Mills at all lately. And I haven't talked to Mills in probably 10 years. Yeah. Like, I used to talk to him, honestly, like, once a week for for years. I went and stayed at his house in um, Marietta when he lived with um, Jason Lawrence. And um, I used to talk to him all the time, man. He went to Italy for, like, some racing gig, and then he called me when he got back from that, and I haven't heard from him since. Probably, that was probably, like, 2005 or 2006. Like, it was a long time ago. Jeez. Yeah, he, you know, like like Lawrence, he had a, he had a little problem with stuff, you know. Yeah, that's what you said. They were living together, and I'm like, eh. Yeah, it was it was a shit show, dude. What happened to his Amsoil deal? 
I have no idea. I heard that like he and uh, Burner got real drunk in the pits or something, and then I don't know what happened. But then that was the that was the end of it. It sounds pretty accurate for Millsy. Yeah, I I was um I was around him. He was like fourteen, riding the A class locally, smoking everybody pretty much, except for maybe like. Barry, and uh, he always had a dip in. Oh yeah, he always had a dip. <laughs> so we're at uh, hurricane. We're at hurricane, and we're, we're like, we're gonna run down to. We were sleeping there. We got there the night before, or whatever. We we're gonna camp there, and um, he's like, uh, let yo, let me drive, and I'm like, what are you fourteen? You're not driving the fucking truck. Like, settle down. <laughs> Just you can come for a ride with us if you want, but you're not driving the truck. <clears throat> and he always had chicks. I don't understand. In the middle of nowhere in New York. And he would just always have chicks with him. But it's a shame. He yeah, was he hauled ass. Yeah, he was fast. He um I think he, he won an overall at Red Bud, right? You went like, I don't know. I don't think I was following years. racing that well when he w had a deal. <clears throat> I need to. I'm up here now, and I may uh, try and go to some local races and stuff. I need to try and when I get up there, try and see if anybody knows where the hell he's at. I need to have him on here. You do, dude. I don't. I don't even know how to get a hold of him. Um, <clears throat> do you know Mike Wondrix? I know, I know of him. I didn't, we did race with him, didn't, didn't we? Yeah. yeah he's got to be about a little older than you, probably, because he was, he was a couple of years <laughs> younger than me. But we all raced. Like, I raced um, Ginolfi and Wondrix and uh, Mills and... Mark Waldell and all those guys in the A class for a couple of years. Can I read? Yeah. Well, he was a little younger, so he was still killing everybody in the um, uh, schoolboy class on his uh, KX one hundred. Yeah, because he he was even younger than me. He was <clears throat> a couple of years younger than me. Yeah, when I was racing A class, he was he was on a KX one hundred. Riding whatever he rode the eighties in the or his eighty in the eighty class, and then he had a KX one hundred. He'd race schoolboy, and the only guys that would beat him were like A class guys on one twenty fives. But he he'd seriously be second, third all the time, like hauling ass on this little ass bike. Yeah, well, I gotta piss again. Like I don't have to pee. This guy. So apparently. I just tried to check, and we are not live on Facebook, it looks like. We're not live anywhere, which I don't understand. Let's see if I can figure this out. Oh, you guys can see what I'm doing. There you go. Are we not? We're not live. Connect live stream to the live API. Yeah, I um, don't. Apparently, I'm going to have to do more research on Facebook Live. Most of the times when we need turbo nuts around here. He don't fucking know. I'm the one that does all this. <laughs> And I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Oh no, so it what's is. What's your deal? You, you, you done riding or what? Uh yeah. I race vet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um. No more rants, huh? Nah. Kind of over it. 
my baby. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Listen, it's fun and stuff. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going to do shows or anything. My leg's pretty much trashed now, which is sweet. But uh, I couldn't do bar hops. I remember Sean Nielsen, I posted a picture of me doing a Shaolin. He was like, fuck, you can still get through the bars, old man. And then, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. And then a year later, nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could probably do a, uh, what was it, um, a twitch where you go through and you touch your legs together. Oh, yeah. And then Saran out. I think that's the only over, I think that's the only over the bar trick I got. Through. Yeah, that's pretty sure that's all I could do anymore. Too dangerous, dude. I didn't really... I was all right with it. It wasn't a problem. But now, like I said, my knee doesn't bend that well. So I'm pretty sure I couldn't bend it enough to get it through the bars. I haven't tried to bar off in fucking 10 years, probably. <laughs> Yeah, isn't it funny how you lose a bunch of tricks? Oh, dude. You get hung um, up or something, and then you're like, yeah, I don't know about this one. I'm we'll just retire I'm that one. <laughs> we'll retire that one. It's funny because there was a point in my career where every picture of me was a Shaolin. That was all anybody got. That was my go-to for a long time. Yeah. I remember uh, us just trying shit on that dirt double in the back of Carl's place that it was so new in freestyle that it was just like anything was almost new that we tried, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> I started doing, I was like, I'm going to do, I did no hand, no foot of cans with my right hand off and then with my left hand off. And I'm going to do, I was like, I'm going to do a nothing can. And you're like, you can't do that, dude. <laughs> Such a hater. <laughs> I was like, come on, why can't I? I can take either hand off. I'm pretty sure you're like, nah, it won't work. <laughs> it's all right. You know who the worst haters are? Or the worst hater is? Austin. Drummond? Yeah. He likes to just feel like what? he likes to just feel like, ah. You can't, the face on that's fucked up. You can't jump it. You know, like, <laughs> it's just constantly got something negative to say to you. I, I like Austin. He's a good dude. No, I like Austin too, but he just, he, that's just how he is. I built these big dirt jumps at my place in Georgia, and I literally didn't call any, I called somebody that didn't even ride, and I was just like, just come out with me and hang out, because I knew how to hit him. I'd, I'd built them and everything. I had it in my head how to hit them. And I knew that if I called those guys, they were going to go, eh, this face is a little mellow and this <laughs> and that. And I was like, I'm just going to jump them by myself and then bring them out here and then be like, hey, look, I just jumped them. So that's what I did. I just had some random person hanging out with me and I jumped both of them. And then I went and then I called them immediately and was like, yo, I got these two dirt jumps going out here. Come hit them. <laughs> he's back on the two strokes yeah I feel like he's that would be one. even weirder to go back to one for freestyle at least I wouldn't know I raced a um, uh, Loretta's qualifier when I was in Georgia on a 252 stroke and I'd, I'd been riding a 450 for about a year and I got on the 250. I never been to the track, so my first whole track, my first whole practice is me trying to figure out the track, and remember how to wind a 252 stroke up, because I just keep going into turns, going yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, you got, yeah. I was like downshift more, okay. <laughs> the two stroke is, is not the lazy man's bike. No, no, which. I, I like all that power for sure. Dude, I, I come into a corner. I was r riding the vet practice, so there's like a bunch of big dudes in there. Like, the guy's got to be like 230 pounds, right? So we're like, I'm g coming into the corner, like just gaining on him like crazy. And I'm we're in the corner, and I've got to be going like three miles an hour faster. And we get straight, and 
I can see the guys like right to my right and I watch his elbow just drop and he just walks me and I'm like banging <laughs> gears and he just doesn't do anything. He's just like, Roar. I was like, oh fuck, this is going to be a long day. No corner speed at all, just all throttle. Hey, you know what they say, corner for dough, jump for show. Yeah, but I jumped for dough for many years. You and me both. So, I don't know about this theory. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I realized I need to do freestyle at uh, Binghamton National, probably like 2000. And um, Saturday's qualifier, I'm like passing all these. There's So, remember the pro section? Oh, yeah. So, um, that section was only, only run for, like, uh, nationals and the only state the, championship. Only for the national. And the state championship. If you were in the A class or a vet class, you could run the, the rest of it. So, coming back out of it, you, like, come over this one ridge, and then you come down. There's another one down this hill, and then you make a right, and you come back up. And on Saturday, I'm passing people like crazy, like, over that second little ridge down the steep hill into the corner. I'm wheeling the first four braking bumps into that second hill, right? And I'm barely making the outside of the turn, and I'm passing people all Saturday. So I watch first practice on Sunday. Kevin Windham wheelies the first 14 bumps, makes the very <laughs> inside. And I'm like, that was just like three seconds on me within like 150 yards. I'd better figure something else out here because... I'm not staying with that guy at all. So that's when I, mean, I that's when I, done, that's when I started. Yeah, but I mean, you want to be able to relate to somebody on the higher end, right? If you're gonna try and do it, and I'm just like, I'm not even in the same planet. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like he, what he and I are doing are totally. They're not even the same thing. Like that guy just made me look silly, one straight away. And then, luckily, freestyle came along. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, who knows? Otherwise, my parents would have been right. My mom's like, are you going to go to college? And I said, no. And she goes, "What do you?" I didn't think so, but I figured I'd ask. What are you going to do? And I was like, I'm going to ride dirt bikes. She's like, what if that doesn't work? And I was like, what, what do you mean it's not going to work? What do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. How did it not work? So then I went to vocational school for plumbing in case it didn't work. No, slow, slow vocational. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to take um, math or uh, science junior or senior year, so count me in. Yeah, that. <laughs> count me in. <laughs> well, shit. I'm about to pee myself. Yeah, I just almost did. Do you want me to do some sponsor plugs? Like, are there? you going to? No. I you're going to sit there. Your sponsor plugs, you're going to sit in there <laughs> quiet. I don't care. You can plug whoever you want. <laughs> All right, do it. I'll be right back. I don't remember shit. Something about a gas thing. Not spilling. That's all I remember. Only because he sent me one of them. <laughs> this podcast should be brought to you by. going on up here? You see this little little beret hat? I think Clint's a fucking undercover bus driver. Yeah, 
useful. Mm -hmm. That was a good pee. <laughs> Dude, that was, it was long. I know. I kept trying to cut it off, but then I was like, just going to go with it. Austin Powers goes. Yeah. <clears throat> Three beers is just like being frozen for 40 years. Three? That's all you bet is three? <laughs> yeah. But they were strong. You've just yeah. been drinking little kids' beers. I got a freaking smorgasbord going over here, <laughs> But you got kids' beers. Yeah, I know. I'm immature, Clint. Okay? I'm, I remember my first beer. Don't get, don't get fucking snobby on me. I don't, okay? I don't. I'm not sure I remember my first beer. Actually, like, I, I, got this ma I got this magic hat. I feel like. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so much better than you, That's now. right. Listen, I got loafers on, drinking IPAs. Fucking living the good life. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> I live in New Jersey. We got everything here. That's what everybody likes to yeah, say. Yeah, fucking high, high property tax. <laughs> Assholes that honk as, as soon as the light turns green. Fucking shitty accents. As soon as the light turns green. Nah, dude. I'm getting about... Half a second to fucking go before you get the horn. <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Nick says he's cleaning up spew and dog shit while drinking beer to boost my immunity as we speak. I don't know it's why. About the Did the dog get sick too? I don't understand. Apparently, everyone in his house got the shit. <laughs> Nick must have cooked. He cooked for everybody. The poor guy. And then that's what happens. Oh, shit. Are you going to go to any Supercrosses, or you're not going to have time, huh? No. I'm on the road next week for ever. The circus starts up, so. Yeah. Circus. You over there petting Stella or something? What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, well, no, not Stella. It's Marley. It's my girlfriend's dog. Gotcha. Marley, look over here. She's like, I don't no, want to no, move. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's so lazy, dude. My dog's like constantly up your ass. Like, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. And she's like, let's just, let's just nap, man. <laughs> <laughs> just go back to sleep. That's why you're yeah. losing half your, your drink. You've drank half of all those beers you showed me because the other <laughs> half know. is on the table. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Why don't you turn your fucking refrigerator down? Dude, because I told you, it usually doesn't do it. <laughs> well, right now it is. So I'm an amateur hour over here. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to let that thing rest. You got a, you got a dog, don't you? Yeah. Crew. Crew boy. Yeah. He's not bothering you. Father, dude, he's fucking been sleeping on the couch for about three hours. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking. He's gonna be eight in March, so he's he's all about that sleeping. Life. Yeah, he seems like a good dog. No, yeah, he's really good. He's just fucking lazy as hell. Uh, when do you leave for? Um, I haven't gotten an exact date, but he said no earlier than February first, so about a week or so. <sighs> Sweet. And you start out in Atlanta, you said. <clears throat> yeah. You guys at, the door. You guys at, at least spend a bunch of time in one place. Yeah, that's what's sweet. 
We spent five weeks in Atlanta. But like each so, place that you go to is more than a week, right? Um, no. Well, yeah. Well, last year there was like two stops that I went to that was just one week. But usually it's at least at least three, two to three weeks. So not too much driving. <clears throat> but Atlanta, Atlanta was the best stop last year. It was it, it's the most fun because the the circus is based out of Atlanta, so. Like we had like Jermaine Dupree come and hang out, got to meet him, like Usher, a couple cool dudes. Nice. Ti, Ti's son or something was there. I didn't meet him, but like got a picture with Jermaine Dupree, so I was pumped on that. Right. Yeah. Who cares about Ti's son? If Ti yeah. came, cool. <laughs> I don't give a shit about Ti's son. I don't even know his name. <laughs> Yeah, but no, Atlanta's sweet, dude. There's there's a lot of a lot of cool places. We found this um, it's like this karaoke rock bar. Yep. So we stumbled across it the first week we were there. I'm we were trying to think of metalsome. Yeah. Yeah, I lived right outside of Maybe Atlanta for like 13 years. Dark horse, dark horse. Yeah, 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 yep, yep. It's downstairs. Yeah, right. So we went there just to get food because there was like no places open and we didn't want fast food. So we like stumbled across this place and we got food upstairs right. and we heard like a bunch of like rock music like coming from somewhere. And so we asked the bartender, we're like, Hey, where's, where's that music coming from? She's like, Oh, downstairs. It's, it's live karaoke. You pay, you pay like 10 bucks or something a song and you get to like literally sing karaoke to a live yeah, band. band. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking sweet. Yeah. And, and you, so cool. you were in and East it, Atlanta. And, East Atlanta is more like everybody's got tattoos and uh Well we were at we were at Turner Field, the old Atlanta Brave Stadium. Right. But I'm saying like um uh Dark Horse Tavern and all that is eastern Atlanta. So like did you guys go to like six feet under? Nah. So that's a bar like We went to fucking we went to Dark Horse three three days a week for about four or five weeks last well there's a bunch of um good good uh bars right in that area like i said um i'm sure there is it was it was cool though because they have like uh, three so they had it was it was three floors this place they had like this little place called the attic where we went upstairs and um like they had vinyl records of like old school punk rock and shit Mm -hmm. there three times a week dude minimum but um, I've never seen live I carry before like that. For, and literally a whole band plays and you get to sing. I'm pretty sure that's the Here's original the place that's ever done that. Like there are other places that do it now, but I'm pretty sure that's like the original place that had live band karaoke. <laughs> pretty sweet. I was pumped on it. I mean, we didn't sing, but we got to hear some rippers and bunch of dumbass fucking drunk chicks trying to sing. Did you ever go to the Claremont? Nope. It's the oldest Maybe. running strip club so. with the original employees. They have a stripper really? named Yes. They have a stripper named Blondie who is a <laughs> African American woman with some blonde hair. She's got to be 60 years old and she crushes <laughs> beer cans between her old leathery tits. Oh, good for her. <laughs> her. Her daughter now <laughs> crushes beer cans between her butt cheeks. And Blondie swears that she's cheating because your butt cheeks are muscle and your boobs are just fat. <laughs> <laughs> the age old debate. That, that is it. That's it. But it's like you. nobody goes there. I mean, I guess some people go there actually for the strippers, but I never did. So cause... basically... You could you could go there and you can get a mother daughter lap dance is what you're telling me. Oof, sounds grim, but I mean, yeah, if they, <laughs> <laughs> if, they if they both happen to be there, sure. But fuck, I need to find you a picture of Blondie, and you'll be like, sixty year old Blondie. Yes, let's see if we can find her. I'm not. I'm not really a strip club guy. It's not my thing. I'd rather just get fucked up at the bar. 
There you go. Come up. Claremont. I was as I was typing in Claremont Lounge. Claremont Lounge Blondie came up automatically. <laughs> you um, gotta love Google. Yeah. Here you go. Oh my God, she's rough, dude. I told you. And they're all even <laughs> I like. She's gonna be like. That's gonna be like this skinny ripper. No. No. <laughs> the exact opposite. No. And that's pretty indicative of most of the strippers there. So it's like, like I said, you're not going there for the strippers. You're going there because it's the oldest it's running strip scalping. club with the original employees. Yeah. And the place is just a shithole. But they had um, their, what ended up making me think of it. I think it was Jason was there with me, but <clears throat> they have karaoke there. Like punk rock karaoke. And the best slash worst punk rock or karaoke period I've ever heard was there. And somebody was singing some Twisted Sister song. And I can't remember what it was, but he just screams the whole time. And this guy was just on stage wasted, just screaming on the top of his lungs for the entire <laughs> song. <laughs> as horrible it was, I loved it. It was great. I think it's Tuesday nights they do karaoke there. But it's like Claremont. Yeah, Claremont Lounge. Um, it's in the bottom of the Claremont Hotel, which has been shut down like forever. And they've been trying to demolish the fucking building. And every time they do, <clears throat> everybody gets in an uproar about Blondie and the Claremont Lounge. And they sign a petition and they won't let them knock the building down. <laughs> classic. <laughs> it's totally classic. I'm like, somebody fix this fucking hotel. Put make it so like Blondie can go up there and give BJ's or whatever. Like, come on, let's incorporate this hotel into this deal. How do, how are we missing out on this? Blondie's rough, dude. Yeah, wait until you watch her. It, it, she was on like um, uh, no res no reservations or something with um. You know who I'm talking about? The guy that does has no. a food show. Uh. Guy Fieri? No. Um, the cool guy. <clears throat> there's no cool. There's no cool guy. Dude. Yeah, yeah. This one guy is <laughs> fairly. He's better than Guy Fieri or fucking Andrew Zimmerman or whatever. At, at least I'd use him to Supercross. Who? Guy Fieri? Just because of his hair. Yeah. They were like, we love this guy. He fits in a Supercross perfectly. He's like, dude, I look like, I look like McGrath. <laughs> At least there's yeah. like they're like we love this guy. He reminds us of the good old days, super cross. Um, I can't remember his friggin' name. I can picture the guy, but I can't remember his name. But anyway, he um ended up going there and Blondie gave him a lap dance. Actually, that dude Joe. Did you ever meet him from England? He lives in Australia now. Joe Stevens. Nope. nope. So anyway, we went there and he ended up, Blondie happened to be there and we got him a lap dance and she's punching him in the face through her boobs. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> but That's a good, good time. So um, you were like outside Atlanta? Yeah, I was like 30 minutes outside of Atlanta West. But, um, what made you move there? Uh, so <clears throat> when I left here, I went, moved down to North Carolina to run a team for that empire racing. They were Suzuki's like satellite, uh, arena cross team. They had John Dow, Jim Neese, uh, Jim Chester, and this other kid, Blake Hovis. And, uh, I ran the freestyle team and we also had Jeff Winstead and Hartman. Winnie. And so I moved there. I lived there for a year. And then that the owner ended up embezzling all the money that went through the team. The team was totally broke. I was the only thing that generated money. They did their budget for the motocross team or for the arena cross team, figuring that Nice and John Dowd would get top three in every single race. And they were including their bonuses and all this shit. And then, of course, they didn't because John Dowd had never <laughs> raced arena cross. And then Jim Neese got hurt right off the bat. So they didn't do shit. So the freestyle was the only thing that generated money because I had shows and I knew what I was going to make. So I gave him a whole budget and everything. He ends up 
using like taking all that money so uh like suzuki john dowd and his mechanic called suzuki and they're like yo just take all the stuff out of the semi you know like and then sell it like make your money that way because the team didn't pay him or whatever so they literally took like full-blown race engines like a bunch of race engines that were just in the truck and suspension and all kinds of <laughs> shit like that and it's exhausts and all this shit so they just took all that stuff because they didn't get paid so then i um was ready to leave there i wanted to go further south so i could ride more of the year and i had written for practice track magazine which was joey casey and so right. i contacted him and he's like he's I, the best remember, right? yeah yeah he was on dmxs too and um joey's like i just bought a house and he goes one of these rooms is yours if you want it and i was like if you can get somebody to build me a practice spot, I'll move down there like immediately. So he goes, there's a guy here that has kids that race. He wanted to build some freestyle jumps. I told him there was nobody here to jump them. Don't bother. He says, let me call him. So he calls me back the next day and says, they're willing to build you a landing and stuff. So I moved down like later that week. It was literally within a week from me talking to him to moving down there. <clears throat> so then I just stayed there. At a riding spot and everything. And it was fun. Gotcha. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. That was it. And then I built a secret stash on that guy's property. And that's where all those videos that I posted were at. So. There you go. 10 4. But. Now I'm back in New Jersey, which is not as much fun as far as riding and stuff, but, you know. No, dude. It's an expensive ship over there. Yeah. My yeah. fucking closest practice spot is Angerman's. A fucking hour and about 40 minutes away. Damn. he's How is he that far from you? Is he way down? He lives down in Olympic City. Uh well, May May's Landing, which is where Vice is from, but right, right by Atlantic City. So he's got to be like three hours from me easily. Oh, for sure. I mean, I mean you're like you're right outside of Morristown, right? Yeah. Yeah, three hours for sure. <laughs> the first but time he. He works during the week, so yeah. Like, I don't even have a practice spot because if it's the weekend, I'm not riding. Right. I have a weekend off. I'm just hanging. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember the first time you came up. Biden just texted me. DB. I write him back. B10. No response. <laughs> this is fucking. This is four minutes ago. He's raging. He's raging, bro. He might be. He's in Texas now, so it's it's ten o'clock there. Yeah, and he's hurt, so he don't right, have shit to right. do. That's a good point. So he don't have shit to do. <laughs> right. He's ta he's taking his pain pills <laughs> and just sitting around waiting. I don't even know what he's doing now. He's probably, he's probably just drinking beers. He's drinking his pain pills and just sitting around. <laughs> if he's not going to eat them, he should just send them to me. No, dude. <laughs> Listen. Uh, addiction is a disease, and I've already proven plenty of times that I don't have that disease. At least not the pain pills. You just like to have fun. That's, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> 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 the last time like when I would get hurt I would just the first week I would just eat all my pills and not worry about anything and then after that you're kind of like listen I need to get back to doing something and then you just get off them it's a lot dude there he is Cruz what up Cruz. he's like I'm eight I don't have time for this shit yeah, he's like, I'm pet, pet me. Yeah, he's like, I gotta poop, dude. Just take me out. <laughs> hey, 
open up the selling back store right now. <laughs> <clears throat> All Dude, right. I, I would just, I would just sell mine every time. Yeah. Every time I got hurt to get pills. Because I can't eat those things, dude. I, I literally get sick every single time. So to me, I would rather I'd rather feel pain and be nauseous. Because it's like the worst feeling in the world to be nauseous for me. Yeah, I just um, feel so, warm and fuzzy inside. I had a bunch. I had a bunch of friends that that love the pills, so I would just sell it to them. Here you go, dude. Forty bucks. The whole bottle's yours. Dude, well, you didn't well, you sell need, his... You need re, you need to refill. It's, it's sixty bucks. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> for a whole bottle you weren't selling a whole bottle for that were you yeah dude you're crazy they're selling pills for like 20 bucks a piece well yeah now dude i'm i'm, I'm not talking about like oxycontins dude i'm talking about like vicodin and like that's fine 10 bucks a piece then hold up i think the kid's up <laughs> are you still awake the baby's up You better watch it. Is that dad hearing? Dude, I get like, I get, um, what do they call it? Faint cries. Like, I'll be like hanging out outside or something, like doing something in the garage. And I, I, I like hear crying, but she's not fucking crying. Yeah. Ears perk up. Nope, she's not. You're just ready. It's like a thing, dude. Apparently yeah. it's a thing. Fucking faint cries or something, they call it, or some shit. Because you're ready to hear it. Dude, built in. You know what's crazy? is like when I was like younger, I'd go on planes, I'd hear fucking s- stupid ass kids fucking crying and shit. And I'd get so pissed off. I'm like, fuck my life, dude. This flight is going to suck. You put on headphones, but you could like still hear them. Now, after I have a kid, I'm like hearing her fucking cry all the time. I don't even hear that shit anymore, dude. I'm like, I'm planes. There'd be three kids fucking crying, dude. Don't even fucking hear it. Like, just block it out. That's good. That's a good talent. Um, what are you doing, dog? All right, yo, I'm going to get ready for bed. Yeah, you're 38. 11 o'clock's your bedtime. That's that's right. <laughs> that's hey, right. we made it two hours, though. We huh? did make it two hours. We're actually a little long because we started early. We did. Which is the first time that's ever happened. Four minutes. Which is what? First time that's ever happened. I thought Schweitzer fucking hit it. He went deep, didn't he? Dude. He definitely went deep. His whole career. I don't, I, don't, I don't have like cool Mono Triple X stories like he's got, but yo, he we just got the, we just we just got two thousand one stories. Well, he he basically told um like his entire timeline from being a snowboarder. <laughs> Did you listen to it? Oh, yeah, that's you right. Saw my comment, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's right. So like you were like, so I was gonna listen to a couple minutes. Two hours later, it's three o'clock. Yeah. Dude, I went to bed at 3 in the morning that night. I started watching at like 1 a.m. I was tired as hell, dude. I was like falling asleep on my couch, and I'm like, oh, I'll just listen to like the first like 10 minutes, see what, see what he's got to say. I fucking fired up, dude. Here I am, 3 a.m. I finished the whole thing. Yeah, he he got right. He was ready. Like, he got down to business immediately. As soon as I was like, hey, what's up, Jay? And he was like, I started. I was a snowboarder. <laughs> yeah, broke my leg. Fuck. Fucking broke my leg. I had a bad accident. I realized snowboarding's not for me. I'm gonna film dudes. Yeah, and that was it. He was just on a roll. No, he, he's no Schweitzer's an interesting cat, dude. Yeah. So he like he travels around. True story. He travels around with a ping pong paddle. Yeah, that's why he's always challenging people in his videos. Because that's that's his thing, and like he came up to my house and I had and I had a fucking ping pong table, so. and we were filming we were filming for something one of the on the pipes or something, and he's like, Are "You staying at my house?" You're like, "You got a ping pong table?" I'm like, "Yeah, in my garage, dude." Oh, dude, let me get my fucking paddle out of the truck. I'm like, "You brought your paddle?" He's like, "Oh, dude, never leave home without it." I'm like, "I'm not even gonna play you, dude. Like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not good. Like, I." 
mean, I could hit the ball back and forth, and, and that's about it. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh, dude, I got my paddle. He's all fucking spiking it, getting all fucking serious, dude, talking shit. I'm like, fuck, dude. Motherfucker. Did he crush you? Oh, he crushed me, dude. It wasn't even... <laughs> it was like fucking 6 to 21 or something. Yeah, I'm not playing that game. I'm just going to no. accept I'm going to lose. Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure I've only played ping pong like a couple times ever. My whole yeah. life. You're not, you have no chance. No chance. But I realize it, at least. Hey, admitting it is the first step. That's right. I've accepted it. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm not going to win this ping pong right, challenge. Dude, get your fucking be- get your beauty sleep. All right. It was fucking good shooting the shit with you. Yeah, man. We need to do it not on the air. We'll get real deep then. Correct. <laughs> you, need, you need to come out to the fucking to the soul circus. I know it. Year. Yeah, once you guys, um, when do you guys come back up this way? Um, well, it's twice, like right? April, April May ish. Yeah, and then there's one later in the year. Philly. Oh, yeah, Philly, Philly yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't know because they're 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 fucking scheduled fucked. So we only know the first two stops right now. So it's in Georgia. both of them are in Georgia, like Duluth or some shit in Atlanta. Which is like they're they're like half an hour apart, maybe. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. Thanks for chatting, Derek. It's been good. And this was our first uh, Facebook Live one, so um, YouTube basically made their criteria for you to monetize your shit out of this world, like ten thousand followers. I just made it to a hundred, so probably not gonna. So golf class. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, <laughs> fuck it. If I'm not getting paid there, I might as well just go to Facebook because I'm. We d- I did a, a live feed on there and we got like two hundred and something people, so um, way better. But you don't even have Facebook, so nope. It's for the birds. Yeah, you're probably smart. <clears throat> I don't I don't need to hear about some chick I went to high school with and her baby mama drama. And how she hates the president. And and how she hates fucking Trump because of <laughs> racist fat fucks. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I, I pretty much just do um, Instagram because it's like Twitter with less reading. Right. I, the only reason why I'm still on Twitter is for football because I'm a football freak. And I, I like fantasy football, so I like to read stuff. I've been watching hockey, but I don't like play fantasy hockey or anything. Dude, I make money every year playing fantasy football. Well, I'm still trying to win something off of Rocky Mountain fantasy mx or supercross like just a some tires or something anything i don't care <laughs> <laughs> a set dude, of this gloves is not, this is not the northeast classic a dude. set of I'm gloves fucking, <laughs> some of the fucking dumb up 759 fucking pick tomac to win this week dude the problem <laughs> is like here's the problem is going to race at e-town in the vet class you've got barry karsten karsten jimmy McElvain. Chad Smith. Both. So you're, gu- you're guaranteed a fourth. At least fourth. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to get a fucking, you're going to get a pack of tear off. Yeah, yeah, you ain't getting shit. <laughs> Those guys are going to wax your ass. And <laughs> there's not anything left for fourth. It's unfortunate. I just have to wait for Fantasy. Chad to crash. Fantasy football, dude. Do a little research on Twitter. You can make some big bucks. I'm just going to bet on Chad's going to crash eventually. And I'm going to pass them. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm going to stop the stream.